there are a lot of 3D concepts that you as a 3D artist are using every day. But what if I told you that there is one concept that an entire industry like game development wouldn't function without? And that is Dormon Bappy, a concept with origins that go back to the 70s, with an impact that made it a core part on any 3D workflow even in other industries. So what are normal maps, how do they work, and what is the story behind their creation in the first place? I've been trying to dust off some of my rusty skills. You know, creating content and creating art don't mix together very well, because they both take time. Still, animation is one area where I think I can get back to very quickly, especially when it comes to motion graphics. Smith, a fellow YouTuber, created a couple of courses on Skillshare, all about motion graphics in Blender. And Skillshare has a couple of classes by Derek Elliott as well, who is a great YouTuber. And his classes are one of the best for this summer. And if you don't know, Skillshare is one of the largest online learning platforms online, with thousands of classes on art, illustration, VFX, and many other fields, taught by industry experts. And you can also check my class, How to Grow Your 3D Art Career. And Skillshare is giving a unique offer to the first 500 people to click the link in the description down below to get a full month of Skillshare premium subscription for free, which you can use to follow any class you want. Now back to the video. Before we take a look under the hood to figure out what a normal map does, let's take a moment first to agree on a few things. So all 3D software like Blender, Maya, Unreal, or whatever floats your boat are based on polygons. In polygonal modeling, every model in your scene is made up of flat 2D shapes, mainly triangles and rectangles, which are connected to each other and define the surfaces of the model. Essentially, if you want to add more details to a 3D model, you've got to add more polygons, either by modeling, sculpting, or using modifiers, or any other technique at your disposal. However, as as many of you probably already know, the more polygons you have on your screen, the more headaches you will have, especially when it comes to computational power and running in real time. So, for example, in video games and real-time experiences such as VR, or even while navigating your 3D software in the viewport, having more polygons than what your GPU and CPU can handle will lead to FPS jobs or even preventing things from running altogether. And when it comes to rendering, having too many polygons can significantly slow down the process. And this is where normal maps come to the rescue. The simplest way they can be defined is as 2D textures that can add fake 3D details to a model without actually having to add more polygons. After all, it is just an illusion they use to trick the viewer by changing how light interacts with flat surfaces and make it seem like a 3D effect with wrinkles, bumps, grooves, and so on. This method allows for the production of optimized scenes without losing any of the quality, which made it a standard in industries like video game development where optimization is extremely important but also in the rest of the 3D industry as a whole to save time and efficiency. From what I have found online, normal mapping started with James Blaine, or Jim Blaine, and this guy is an American computer scientist famous for his computer graphics work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and research papers, awards, books, and TV shows, in addition to other stuff. But this is not why we are here, because Jim is also a total legend in our industry, which is related to 3D. So after an academic journey at the University of Michigan, the true start of Blin's career was at the famous University of Utah, the place to be for computer graphics research at the time. And they had the perfect combination of funding, people, equipment, and opportunity to lead to the world of CGI. In this environment, Blin collaborated with many to lay the foundation for his later research, starting in 1976 at the annual Seagraph conference, while Blin and another icon, Martin Newell, and they presented a paper on texture and reflection in computer-generated images. For the next two years, Jim immersed himself in research, tirelessly exploring new frontiers in the field, until fate intervened and changed everything when he found inspiration, believe it or not, in his own shoes. In an interview he gave to FX Guide, Blin shared an interesting antidote about the origins of bump mapping. While he was trying to make a picture of a water molecule, he had the idea of trying to make a texture for the surface details. However, to his frustration, 
all his attempts resulted in smooth surfaces that didn't cast the bumpiness that he was desiring. But that wasn't the end. Because in a moment of genius, Blin looked down at the highlights of his shoes, which were made of leather with an embossed pattern on the surface, and he said, what is making these things look bumpy is not the height of the displacement and how far the surface is displaced, but the fact that it changes the angle of the surface from one place to the next. So what if I could nudge the surface normal from one place to the next, plug that into the lighting equation, and that would be a good approximation of it. And after working through the calculations, he put his theory to test and finally produced a small animation of a sphere to see if it was working. And that was it. He finally produced bump mapping that simulates the bumps and wrinkles in a surface without the need for geometric modification to the model. And this set the foundation for this concept, which kept evolving throughout the years to become the standard in the industry and become widely adopted. Thinking about it, almost all of us are used to what normal maps do. But have you ever wondered how they actually work? Well, look at it this way. A normal map is a special 2D image with some tricks up its sleeve by storing what we call per fragment normal data. Basically, each pixel in the normal map holds data about which way every tiny part of the surface is facing. This information is stored as a vector with three axes of the 3D space, which are X, Y, and Z. And with a normal map, these vectors are represented by the RBG values, which are red, green, and blue. And this is why normal maps have this blue purplish color. It is because of the way the vector is stored in the RBG values, that the values in these colors dictate to the 3D software the direction the surface should be facing, in addition to its depth and if it will be pointing in or out depending on the colors it has. Of course this is fairly technical, which can be confusing for beginners in the subject. While some might argue that we are just scratching the surface and it lacks depth, but honestly, I think nobody wants this video to become more boring, I mean a mathematics lecture, so let's leave it at that. And if you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Generally speaking, you can create normal maps in three different ways. First, you've got the classic RBG approach, or PBR approach, where you make tileable textures that you can assign to anything. I think the way these are made depends on the artist, because sometimes they are produced manually and other times they are rendered out of a 3D application. But my personal favorite is the good old Photoshop which you can use to quickly convert any texture you take into a normal map. And if you want something fancier, you can try software such as Materialize if you want more control or if you want to use online services. One of the other two methods is to create a detailed 3D model first, then you can bake those details into a normal map, which would allow you to use a simplified, low-poly version of the model while retaining the appearance of a complex, detailed model through using normal maps, which can be done in software such as Blender, Max, Maya, or even better, Substance Painter. On that note, you can also paint the normal map directly on the model, then create a normal map based on that in software such as Painter. And you can use different brushes, alphas, and other techniques to paint the normals and dictate if it is gonna point inside or outside, and how intense it's gonna be. As you can see, it is clear that normal maps are an incredible technology with a history that can be considered fascinating. But let's not put it on a pedestal either, because just like everything else under the sun, they have their fair share of weaknesses. First of all, normal maps are like a magic trick. They make you believe something that isn't there. In the same vein, while light hits a surface with a normal map, it sells you the illusion of seeing 3D details on a flat surface. So depending on how light is hitting it, that illusion of 3D will instantly vanish, especially if you get too close, or if you look at it from the wrong angle, since you can really see how flat it is. Besides, the fake 3D depth they display can never be as deep as an actual geometry, meaning that it's not exactly an alternative to 3D geometry, rather it is more of a support that can help you make 3D models look better. For example, if you have a character that will be close to the camera, you might want to avoid using normal maps or applying them more subtly on small details. Similarly, if an asset is only visible from a certain angle, you should probably keep that in mind and know how to use it. But hey, we are just scratching the surface here because there are different situations and different scenarios for each case. 
And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more informative videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.